Those that remain in God's program, those that have longevity of impact, and not just people who are zealous, they are not just people who are gifted, but they are people who can read the writings in the world. Ten years ago, the church was going to enter a new season. There were people who predating those ten years were relevant, were at the cutting edge of God's prophetic and apostolic activity, but simply because for some reason they lost the Assignments to understand seasons. There are many things about prophetic seasons. Prophetic seasons come with a change in patterns. And if you do not have discernment to understand prophetic seasons, you will be using the jawbone of an ass where the duty of that jawbone is already over. It was once used to kill 3,000 Philistines, but it was not always used. Prophetic seasons demand discernment to change and to switch patterns, to know how to stand upon your watch, set yourself upon the tower to see what the Lord says. It is true that the Red Sea once parted, but it is not the only formula for escaping water. So if you stand before Jordan and you are expecting it to part like the Red Sea parted, you may die there because there are times the formula will be that the sea will part. There are other times you will be empowered to walk upon the water. There are times that the storm you will be inside. Yours is to verify whether Jesus is in the boat. So the rod, the boat, and your feet are all tools that can help you go to the other side depending on what season. Is someone following already? Many, many believers start well. They start well in ministry. They start well in business. The world is full of gifted people who are largely bankrupt of spiritual intelligence. And so seasons, prophetic seasons come and come upon them and they do not know how to navigate these seasons and people literally lose their relevance. And you hear people say, this man was once anointed, was once great. This business was once great. There are many businesses who had their seasons and they excelled but from an economic standpoint they did not have the intelligence to adjust to the world that was changing and today they have neatly been etched out of relevance and that is true even for ministers of the gospel that is true for families that is true for nations those who are leading the field in any area of life today have mastered the art of not just providing the value that keeps them relevant but they have kept an extra eye like wise men to watch seasons so that when they detect a change in season they go back spiritually economically politically to the drawing board and they reinvent themselves to remain relevant if you're with me already say amen, amen. so for part one we're looking at isaiah 43 i want to show you a few things by the spirit of god that will help and guide us let's read 18 and 19 isaiah 18 and 19 part 1 remember ye not the former things hallelujah neither consider the things of old 19 behold I will do a new thing now it shall spring forth shall ye not know it I will even make a way in the wilderness he says and rivers in the desert may the Lord bless the reading of his word the first point we need to examine in discussing this scripture is the statement remember ye not remember ye not please follow carefully that is a very powerful warning he said remember ye not he is attempting to guide your focus to something and he's saying the way the mind works is you cannot be focused on the past and on the future together are we together so he's helping to disconnect you from something so that he can redirect your attention to something else god is doing because at every given point your mind your attention your zeal your commitment your passion can only be invested in one aspect of your life and in this case this person here is focused on yesterday and its achievements or its failures and the prophet begins by saying remember ye not i wrote here over dwelling in the past or on the past whichever is appropriate over dwelling in the past or on past thoughts both negative and positive can hinder your advancement and your progress in life 
overdwelling on the past, both negative and positive, can hinder your advancement and your progress in life. As simple as this statement is, there are many people today, they failed because they succeeded. The reason why they became failures was that at one point in their life, they were too successful to be focused. There are many people today who became successful because they so failed that it brought them to a point of determination that they would not fail again. Here he is telling us that the past, whether positive or negative, can have an adverse effect as far as destiny actualization is concerned. The negative past, I wrote here, the negative past can create fear, can create discouragement, and it can also deflate your passion to press. When you dwell on a negative past, it sustains an ability to bring fear, it sustains an ability to bring discouragement, and to deflate your passion to press. Give us Judges chapter 6, please. We'll read from verse 13 to 15. Judges chapter 6. Is God helping someone? Now follow carefully. And Gideon said unto him, the angel of the Lord comes to Gideon and calls him a mighty man of valor. And look at Gideon's response. Go back to 13. Oh my Lord, if the Lord be with us, why then is all this befalling us? And where be the miracles which our father told us of, saying, Did not the Lord bring us up from Egypt? But now the Lord hath forsaken us and delivered us into the hands of the Midianites. 14. And the Lord looked upon him and said, Go in this thy might, and thou shalt save Israel from the hand of the Midianites. Have I not sent you? You thought Gideon would say, Wow, I'm now impressed. Look at his response, verse 15. And he said unto him, O oh my Lord, wherewith shall I save Israel? Behold, my family is poor in Manasseh, and I am the least in my father's house. Dwelling on a negative past. Now you understand what I mean by it can bring discouragement. It can bring fear. It can deflate your passion to press. There are many people today who have lost out on their passion towards life, towards ministry, because their life is a plethora of negative occurrences. Financial problems, marital problems, health problems, ministry failure, maybe mistakes of the past, and all those things combined can become a weapon that the devil can use to deflate your passion. Do you know, I'm sure that every one of you here can bear witness that there are people who at one point you could trace their zeal. Their zeal for life was palpable. I mean, they, they were bubbling with energy. And a few years down the line, when they've been beaten down left and right by the vicissitudes of life, they watch you in your zeal as a young man and they say, Save Johnny, this road you are following, we once followed it. Dwelling on a negative past, remember ye not, he says. Hallelujah. The Lord is challenging Gideon, giving him an assignment to be a mighty man. And Gideon is saying, listen, you don't know my problem. I am the least in my father's house and my father's house is the least. So don't even bring this. There are many preachers today who have so failed in ministry to a point that any word that comes from God, they cast it as a word from the devil. There are many people who have failed in business. There are many champions, custodians of great destinies. That have lost it all. I do not know any great man who has not failed before. When you find one, run away. When you find a great man who has not failed before, you are standing before a risk. There is a failure requirement that becomes an anchor that brings balance and stability to your life in the presence and in the midst of success. Hallelujah. Are we together now? Yes. So dwelling on a negative past can affect you. Many of us, you are listening to me right now in this auditorium, across the overflows and following online. Perhaps this is already a word for you. In the midst of your failure, there is still an apostle there. 
in the midst of your failure there is still a prophet there in the midst of a failure there is still a businessman the kingdom financier is still there do not think yesterday went away with the gift and the grace and the mantle and the calling it is still there remember ye not he's redirecting the focus of a people to understand the new that God is doing now are we together now yes you cannot discern and understand the prophetic thing God is doing in your family apostle don't tell me about a great life we've lost three four five members of our family and we do not even know who is next remember ye not the former things when he says remember ye not he's not saying erode it out of your memory that cannot happen he's saying do not dwell do not give it life and strength do not dedicate your focus do not invest your attention to that which is dead you only try to water a tree that is dying but if it is dead you leave it are we together how about the positive past the positive past I wrote here can create complacency can create pride can create overconfidence and even indiscipline let me take it again dwelling on the positive past your achievements over dwelling I would say Overdwelling on your positive past can create complacency, lukewarmness, can create pride, can create overconfidence, and can create a sense of indiscipline. When you dwell on your negative past, the side effect is that you will have fear discouragement it would deflate your passion to press but when you dwell on your positive past over dwell there build a monument and a camp around yesterday and its achievement and all its tried it's able to bring you to a point of complacency a point of pride a point of overconfidence and indiscipline judges chapter 16 please from verse 18 to 21 give it to us it's the same book of judges now now we want to examine another character called Samson. Samson was a warrior par excellence. The source of his strength was a mystery. This man would single-handedly defeat a whole army without seeking for help. And he became so confident upon his achievements of yesterday and now yesteryears. Read verse 18 and 29. Follow carefully and let's learn a lesson there. When Delilah saw that he had told her all his heart. She sent and called for the lords of the Philistines, saying, Come up this once, for he had showed me all his heart. And the lord of the Philistines came up unto her and brought money into her hand. You see why poverty is very bad? Because this woman destroyed the destiny of a great man simply because of money. And she made him sleep upon her knees. And she called for a man and she caused him to shave off the seven locks of his hair and she began to afflict him and his strength went from him verse 20 the Bible says and she said the Philistines be upon thee Samson read the remaining part of 20 ready one to read and he awoke out of his sleep and said I will go up as at other times as before and shake myself and he wished not that the Lord had departed from him verse 21 but the Philistines took him and put out his eyes and brought him down to Gaza and bound him with fetters of brass and he did grind in the prison house can I tell you overconfidence has destroyed many people I will not pray but the power of God will still move I will not rehearse like 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 never before but I will still do well I will still be a champion I will not study scripture but the grace is already there I have revelation anyhow can I tell you our world is full of psychophants who clap for you even when you are falling until you finally get to your grave you must know how to celebrate success and create a boundary and say Lord thank you for the blessings of yesterday but this one thing I do forgetting the things that are behind whatever it is I press many people do not have the stamina to look away from the uploads of yesterday and remain focused into the vision of the now dwelling on your positive past can destroy 
it can bring pride it can bring overconfidence in the case of Samson she woke him up and said the Philistines are upon you and the Bible said he shook himself like before I will not read any business book I've been an astute businessman I will excel as before it doesn't matter I'm a man so loved by people doesn't matter how serious I am spiritually or not members who come as before the deception of success is that without any effort to continue it tries to indoctrinate you into believing that the seasons that are upon you will remain that way forever make reference to my teaching the law of seasons remember the dream of pharaoh that in every man's life there is seven years of plenty and seven years of famine what you do in the years of plenty is what will sustain you please listen to that teaching the law of seasons I told you that every dry season comes with a letter from rainy season I am coming and every rainy season comes with a letter from dry season I am coming you will not always be a CEO mm -mm. no matter how great you are are we together yes respectfully speaking there are many people especially in the arts and entertainment in sports who did not know that the seasons in a man's life there is transition and you can find someone who may be an excellent goalkeeper an excellent striker speaking in terms of soccer football and they can enjoy grace and and splendor for 10 15 perhaps 20 years and in one moment how about political leaders in one moment you are a leader and in a matter of minutes everything the entire paraphernalia that comes with your position departs remember ye not the former things nor consider the things of old remember ye not the former things great former things the moment it is former whether it is great or it is not you celebrate it you can reminisce on it so that it helps to add that energy but over dwelling in yesterday have you seen people who the only thing they have to tell you is the achievements of yesteryears i was once anointed we once do, did mighty crusade for instance or I was once a great businessman. I shook hands with this president and that president. And you are asking, where were you when seasons changed? You must understand how to navigate prophetic seasons. Otherwise, you would not have longevity of impact. So the prophet is teaching us and he's saying, remember ye not the former things. Nor consider the things of old. We have learned so far now that over dwelling on the past, whether positively or negatively, can create an adverse effect on your life and destiny. Philippians chapter 3, 13 and 14. Just to buttress on that point, Paul said, Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, he says, but this one thing I do, I like Paul, forgetting those things which are behind, the achievements, the pain, the failure, Apostle, I would have been a great man today, but in 1999, they defrauded me of my business. And it is past. You cannot continue remaining there, whereas there is a demand upon your life and your destiny. You must sustain the ability to wave goodbye to yesterday and all its crowns and all its pain so that you can press. Nobody runs forward looking backward. Have you found such a person that you run, you really intend to run? Say an Olympian and they shoot the gun on your marks, set. And then they shoot the gun and the person is turning back and intends to run and to run and win. Mm -mm. Your focus should be so much so that even looking to the side can distract you. Talk less looking back. Let's finish that scripture. I press towards the mark for the price of the high calling in Jesus Christ. I consider not myself to have apprehended but this one thing I do, forgetting the things that are behind and reaching forth for those things that are before me, he said, I press. Hallelujah. The next prophetic word from that scripture is behold. I like that statement. When he now says, remember ye not the former things. Now that he's brought you to a point where you've been detached to yesterday, 
its success, the crowns, and the pains, the failures all together. He now says, behold. The word behold is a very powerful word. Behold means see with the eyes of your spirit. Behold means conceive as a reality what I want to tell you. Behold means let me have your rapt attention. Now that you have been distracted away from the mundanity of yesterday, behold, let me have your attention. You want to understand what behold means? You have to read the book of Acts that Peter and John were on their way to get beautiful at the hour of prayer. The Bible says they saw a man who, had, who was seated there for a long time, lame. And the man was begging for arms. Let me show you what behold means. And Peter said, look on us. Let me have your attention. And the Bible says Peter fastening his eyes on him said, look on us. Verse 5, now, and he gave heed. That's what it means to behold. He gave heed to them expecting to receive. He gave heed to them expecting to receive. To receive an instruction, to receive a blueprint, to receive a pathway. When he says behold, it means I need your attention, spirit, soul, and body. I'm about to deliver something to you that your destiny depends on. Behold. This is a prophetic word. There are many ways God tells us to behold. He will start showing you a certain dream within a certain season. It is him saying, behold, let me have your attention. You've been too distracted. But right now there is something that your ministry needs to do. There is something, there is a formula coming from heaven that spells your dominion for the next 10 years. Behold. Behold, God is speaking to someone. Behold, the next 10 years will not be like the last 10 years. Behold, have you received the prophetic blueprint for business? Have you received the prophetic blueprint for ministry? Have you received the prophetic blueprint for politics? Have you received the prophetic blueprint for that which God is doing in your family? Behold, behold means let me have your attention. For some of you, it's taken you two years to behold because one moment you want to focus and then you remember. Do you know that you can behold for a short time? He looked at Peter and Peter fastened his eyes on Jesus and he said, if it be thou, bid me come. And he said, come. While he was focused, he kept walking. But the Bible says the waves, you would think because you are beholding, the waves should stop. They will still be there. But your ability to look away from them and onto Jesus. The waves and the vicissitudes of life have distracted people such that they stop beholding. The reason why he brought that dream last year was because he was trying to get your attention. Do you not know you are a great prophet? Do you not know you are a great apostle? Do you not know you are a great intercessor? Do you not know there is a kingdom financier within you? Do you not know that is a portion of God's program that has been committed to you? But God is calling you to behold. Do not play with this word. It takes a long time for God to get men's attention. Go and read your Bible. There are few men who God got their attention in a moment. For instance, you know how long it took God to negotiate with Abraham until he believed God finally? God had to invent a strategy to get Abraham to believe that he would become the father of nations. You would think just because he was Abraham, he believed. No, study and read your Bible. One night God had to call him and said, Abraham, count the stars. He tried counting and he lost count. Try again. He tried counting and he lost count. He said, the same way you have lost count, that is how your seed will be. And the Bible says, finally, Abraham believed God and it was credited unto him for righteousness. You know how long it takes for God to get the attention of men? There are people who it will take decades for God to finally call them and say, do you know from age five, the dream you started having was me calling you and you are finally saying yes to me at 55. 50 years to behold. So don't you play with this word. When he says behold, he's not just saying use your optical eyes. It takes a level of focus that only God can give to look away from situations and circumstances and to behold but there is a miracle in beholding one of the miracles is that as we behold him we are changed hmm. as we behold him we are changed please listen listen let your heart be open to understand what i'm teaching you tonight 
the challenge with many people and the reason why it looks like God is not doing so much with you is because you have not mastered the art of beholding beholding can take a long time beholding can take a long time do you realize ladies and gentlemen that all that happened to the disciples for three and a half years was their ministry of beholding they were beholding as they were being changed lecture after lecture beholding does not just mean see sometimes beholding can mean stop what you are doing now for the next five years that is the price of beholding Sometimes beholding can mean relocate to another city and remain there until I come to you. Beholding has a serious implication. It can mean suspend what you are doing for now, no matter how productive it is. There are few people who can behold. Is someone learning? Behold can, means, can mean that God can give you a, an instruction and say instead of giving 10% or 20% of all your earnings for the next one year, for you it is 80% every, there is something I want to teach you that will evolve you into the financial apostle that I'm programming you to become. Beholding is not just your ears. Beholding is not just your eyes. Beholding is your heart and your life. And because the Spirit of God does not struggle with man indefinitely, you have a choice to be so distracted that you distract his presence away from your life. He will respect you. He will honor you. But the danger is that you will be losing relevance to a season that is coming. Hallelujah. There are many sermons that have come out from beholding more than studying there are many songs that have come from beholding more than studying there are many mantles that have rested upon people what was the price to carry elijah's mantle if you can see me not if you can talk you become a talkative while i'm rising you will remain there and the prophets the sons of the prophets were talkatives but they did not know how to behold here was a man who said i need something a double portion he said ah my dear son you have asked a hard thing but if you can see me was he not looking at him and the Bible says suddenly he saw a chariot of fire that came to carry him and he, he stood there focused while he was standing there the sons of the prophet were shouting distracting doing all kinds of things he, he remained focused and that mantle fell upon him he said my father my father the chariots of uh, the chariots of of horsemen and the chariots of israel and the horsemen thereof and that mantle fell upon him he carried it and went to the jordan and he said where is the lord god of elijah and he he, he struck the the mantle and the jordan parted hither and thither Proximity does not necessarily mean you are beholding. How many of you know that there are people who can be so worried their position is to look at you? Someone can literally be looking at you like this and that is a sign that he has left you because he's so distracted. He's just thinking, this fuel now, this issue now. And yet the person is looking at you and you will think that the person is looking at you, it means that he's giving you the attention. And the person is thinking of something far away from church. Behold. Ah, very powerful word. So remember ye not the former things, nor consider the things of old. Next instruction. Behold. Behold. See. Dedicate your life and your destiny. Be prepared to receive. Be prepared to understand. Be prepared to be engaged prophetically. And then the next instruction is I do a new thing. This is very, very powerful. I do a new thing. I do a new thing. He never said I will say a new thing. He says I will do a new thing. But let me tell you something about the way God operates. You know by now that God never does what you want or what you pray for. No, he does what you pray for that is consistent with what he has said. The only thing that moves the hand of God are his words. Genesis 21, 1. Do not forget this scripture for as long as you live. Let's read it together. Genesis 21, 1. 
one to read and the Lord visited Sarah as he had said and the Lord did unto Sarah as he has spoken one more time and the Lord visited Sarah not just as she wanted he visits as he has said he does as he has spoken he visits as he has said he does as he has spoken so if your desire is not captured within his speaking there is no performance the performance of God in the life of a man is only possible when your desire is consistent with something he has said. The assignment of the power of God is to make his speakings manifest in the life of the believer. To make his speakings manifest in the life of the believer. To make his speakings manifest in the life of the believer. So when God says his power moves to honor what he has said so that there will be a performance, there will be a manifestation of those things that he has said are we together now this is why the word of God is your basis for receiving anything in the kingdom if you cannot find what God has said there is no basis for God's commitment towards you because he has submitted his reputation below he has exalted his word the Bible says even above his office above his name you have to learn this so when he says I will do a new thing Another expression for it is that find out the things I have said I will do because it is what I have said that I will do. I refer you to my teaching, Exceeding Great and Precious Promises. There we considered how the, the rich deposit all of the systems of advantage that have been provided for the believer in Christ. Hallelujah. The Bible says God had blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. But you must know them whereby are given to us these great and exceeding precious promises that by them we might be partakers of his divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. If you're together, shout a loud amen. amen. Behold, I do a new thing, a performance but you see, another word I want us to consider in that sentence is the word new. Everybody here, I presume, understands English. The word new means sometimes an unfamiliar path. Are we together now? New may not necessarily mean a repetition of something that has happened. New always suggests a virgin dimension. Something that you have never, is not captured in your memory of yesterday. That means there is a technique and a technology for approaching new things. Hallelujah. Behold, I do a new thing. The new, I wrote here, prophetic season before us demands three major things. If we want to see the new manifested in our lives, there is a prophetic season. An old season is wrapping up in our lives across the body of Christ and a new season is opening right before us but a new season requires three things number one discernment and flexibility to experience the new the first thing you need is discernment and flexibility please write it down discernment and flexibility your spirit and your mind that floodity of mind and thoughts is very important if you are to experience the new hallelujah in mark chapter 2 mark chapter 2 give us 11 and 12 mark chapter 2 please now this was the man who was lame Jesus looks at him and says, I say unto thee, arise and take up thy bed and go thy way into your house. Verse 12, the Bible says, and immediately he arose, he took up the bed and went forth before them all. In so much that they were all amazed and they glorified God saying, we never saw it in this fashion this is what it means to be new it comes in a fashion that you are not used to you will need discernment so that you don't call evil good just because god is not moving in a way he moved before does not mean he's not the one moving you see getting used to how god moved 
sometimes can limit you from discerning how he is moving now. If you were there, in my example again that I gave earlier on, if you were there when the Red Sea parted, every time you see a sea, you start smiling, especially if you have a rod in your hand. Except that the strategy for your victory at that point will not be the parting of the Red Sea. How many people have remained before Jordan for a long time? Look at the man in John chapter 5. I always make reference to this man. The Bible says he was lying down there for 38 years. There was no man to help him sadly but Jesus came to introduce to him that the way to be healed by the stirring of the water is only one there are many other strategies another strategy is when Jesus comes to you your season has happened you don't have to wait for one year in his absence you can make do with whatever formula that is there but Jesus is able to step in in one moment this is very powerful the principles of business diligently followed can prosper you with time. It is true that that is a very a biblically recommended pathway. But I submit to you by the authority of scripture that is not the only way. When Jesus comes, he can change the dynamics of certain realities. For instance, by this time tomorrow. By this time tomorrow is not an economic principle. But it is a principle that has, has validity from scripture. Who am I speaking to? Behold, I do a new thing. That means your life will be a wonder. People will say, this is the only way to make children great. This is the only way to get land and build a house. This is the only way to do ministry. And yet God will be redirecting you through virgin parts that don't make sense, except that the result will be exceptional. You, it will be in a way that people will say, we have never seen it in this manner. You have to be flexible. Listen, you see, this is the reason why in followership, there are two dimensions. Number one, follow them who, have, who through faith and patience have obtained the promise. Why do we follow them? Because of the advantage of experience. There is a cyclical movement to life. This is where age, eldership, and experience plays. Are we together? Even if you are Samuel who will be a great prophet, you will need Eli to help you interpret the voice of God because he has had it before. And God will usually speak to you using the voice of Eli. However, there are certain virgin moves of God that only happens when you look unto Jesus. That is another way to follow. There is follow them, but there is looking unto Jesus. Because there are times that he moves, both the old and the young stand at a loss because it is a path that has never been followed. Listen, if you are a prophetic person, discern what I am telling you. There are many, many people who respectfully speaking, loyalty to how God moved yesterday is stopping them from aligning with how he is moving now. Hallelujah. Yes. It is true that he once spat on the ground. And made spittle out of it. But that is not the only way. No. Many miracles did Jesus in the presence of his disciples which were not recorded here. Yours is for your heart to be open. That's why I love the, 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 the rendition here. They are songs of worship. They said I will follow the lamb. But they also said I will follow the lion. Do you know it's the same person? So why are you mentioning two dimensions to the same person? Because the way the lion leads you is not the way the lamb will lead you, although it is still the same person. You don't have to stretch your ears to hear the lion. The roar is loud enough. But you will need dedication and concentration to hear the lamb speak. I am meek and I am lowly. There was a wind and the voice was not in the wind. There was an earthquake and the voice was not in the earthquake. And then after all of that, there was a still, small voice. Elijah, what are you doing here? But when fire was coming from heaven, it was not silent. It came in such a mighty way that it came and consumed everything. Ladies and gentlemen, please hear me. We need a generation of men and women who understand how to discern. To discern, to discern. 
The bankruptcy of discernment has gotten many to a point where they are not flexible and they do not understand what God is doing. It is true that you have never seen a child prophesy, but one day your child of four years old can look at you and say, Daddy, don't do business with that man. Go and pray for two hours. And it does not make sense. His age, you are used to matured elderly people with ministerial pedigree speaking to you. But God decides to use an earthen vessel that does not make sense. And yet the most powerful prophetic instruction in your life may come from that child. If you are a king and you are looking for a prophet and you ignore the slave girl, you may never find the prophet. You must know how to hear the king, the prophet, but you must also know how to hear the slave girl. Because sometimes it's the advice from the slave girl that connects you to Elijah. Are we together now? Say discernment. One more time, say discernment. There are times that you are preparing to go and do business or go and do whatever and the Spirit of God constrains you. And in that constraint, watch this, in that constraint, something begins to happen to you. Watch what happens to you. You begin to have a feeling. Go for a three-day fasting. Listen, can I tell you, sometimes it, will, it does not make sense to anybody including you. Just the foolishness of obeying God. You go and lock yourself. First day, nothing happens. You just keep praying. Lord, you asked me to come here. Second day, nothing happens. By the third day, a veil that did not open for your grandfather, a veil that did not open for your father, that vista into the prophetic destiny of the family just opens. And God says, this is the reason why everybody has failed in your family. This is the reason why people did not rise, even though they were missionaries. Correct this. Adjust this. Step into this eternal covenant and this consecration and you will emerge out of nowhere and men who do not understand this thing will say from whence did you come we we do not know you in this fashion hello beloved in christ we hope this message was a blessing to you i would want you to do something for us if you are new here kindly hit on that subscribe button for us and then like this video as well share to your family and friends to bless them because we know that this message will be a blessing to their body, to their soul, and to their spirit. We would need you to do one thing for us too. Tell us in the comment section where you were watching us from. And if you've got any testimony for us, kindly share with us. Thank you for watching.